All right, here it is, the high modulus 32 inch mast from Lyft. They claim it's 40% stiffer than their standard carbon fiber mast. To be honest, this is one of those upgrades I never really asked for. I mean, I've never been out on my board thinking, you know what, I really wish this mast was 40% stiffer, but here it is. So let's see what all the fuss is about. As I unbox this, you can tell it's well crafted. Lift doesn't skimp on quality, that's for sure. It comes nicely packed in a sturdy case, ready to go right out of the box. But the real question is, does it actually make a difference? Now, swapping out the mast is straightforward. Just a few bolts here, a few wires here, and the coolant lines snap, and you're good to go. Installing the high modulus mast on my board feels the same as any other mast. I'm not feeling any noticeable weight difference either. They've definitely got the solid build part down. But will I notice 40% more stability in my carves? Will I be able to pull off 40% more wicked cranking and banking turns when I'm out there on the water? Only one way to find out. Let's ride. So, I've taken the high modulus 32 inch mast out for a spin, and here's my honest opinion, I couldn't tell the difference. Lift claims it's 40% stiffer, but in real world riding, that didn't translate to a noticeable improvement in performance. Don't get me wrong, it feels great, solid and reliable like all of Lift's gear, but if you're expecting a game-changing experience, this ain't it. Honestly, it feels like Lyft spent time and resources on an upgrade that no one was really asking for. I mean, where's the innovation we actually need? I personally would have preferred that Lyft solve what I call the Lyft Face Plant Syndrome, or LFS for short. This is the well-known and documented persistent issue that many Lyft riders have experienced when their boards suddenly stop dead for no good reason mid-ride and fling their riders into the air head first into the water. Or, if they really just wanted to improve their masts, they could have simply made their mast taller, or moved the motor and prop lower so that I could get even more altitude when I'm banking. In the end, the high modulus mast is a well-built, high-quality product, but it's a solution to a problem that wasn't really there. It looks as though Lyft has discontinued their old 32-inch mast, so anyone who buys a board with a 32-inch mast will get the new high-modulus mast. This is good, because, as far as I can tell, there's no reason to buy this upgrade if you are simply replacing a last-gen 32-inch mast. If you're looking to make a big difference in your ride, there are other areas where your money could be better spent. To learn more about those, please allow me to suggest you check out our review of the 160 Camber Pro or the 32 Glide. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Me first test with this high modulus mast and me trusty 100 Surf V2 wing paired with the 32 glide stab. Well, it left me feeling like I'd been swindled by a scurvy salesman. No difference at all, I says. I was ready to cast this mast into Davy Jones's locker, thinking it was just another tall tale and bluster that didn't live up to the boast. But then, it hit me like a cannonball broadside. Why'd Lyft go to all this trouble, pouring their gold into a mast that'd be stiffer than a sailor after too much grog, eh? And then, I saw it clear as the North Star. Me 100 surf wing, she's a stout lass, thick and sturdy, with barely a bit of flex in her bones. But... 
What if this mast were paired with something wider, like a high aspect wing? Aye, a wing made for riding the waves, slicing through the curls with grace and speed, as thin as a cutlass blade and as wide as a bow-legged wench. You see, lift be a surf foil company at heart, bred by the waves and born in the swell. They didn't build this mast for us fresh-water sailors, no, they built it for the true wave riders, those who dance on the waves and carve through the ocean's fury. So, before I declared this mast, a mutiny shat out by some overpaid scalawag marketing executive, I decided to give her another shot. This time, we'll see if the high modulus mast be worth its weight in treasure when paired with a wing fit for surf riding. Onward, me hearties, to find the truth. Okay, so like I was saying, I've been thinking a bunch about the high modulus wing. And while I still agree it totally is something no one asked for, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a super awesome product. I just wasn't able to feel any difference in my carves. So I, and I tested it using the Surf uh, V2 100 front wing and a 32 glide. But as I was thinking about it, I was like, well, that's a very stiff little tiny wing. What happens when you go out on something that's much more flexible, like, like a high aspect wing? Maybe the combination of the stiffer mast, 40% stiffer, with the flex, maybe I'd notice a huge difference in that ride. So I'm gonna go ride that today and see, how, see if I notice it. I'm gonna really test the hell out of this thing because, um, I would love to find, I would love to report, hey, this is awesome for these people and this is why it's worth upgrading to. And if I can't, I'll be honest about that too. But I'm definitely gonna give it its fair shake. So let me set up my board, throw on a, a wing that I usually only use in the ocean, only use in waves, and see if I notice a difference on the, flesh, uh, the flat fresh water that we've got here. Okay, so this is the high modulus mast, 40% stiffer than their old mast. It's the 32 inches long mast, which is, in my opinion, as I continually share, the only mast size anyone should ever own and lift should ever sell. I mean, I guess I'll take that back. Maybe there's a reason to have a longer mast. But for now, I like the 32. All right, this is what I had surfed the 100 and the 32 glide. You can tell just like, this is a very, very stiff wing. Uh, most because it's so small and so, so thick. Take a look at this guy. This is the high aspect wing. Uh, this one is the, uh, the 90 high aspect wing. And I borrowed this from my neighbor, Leo. So everybody in the comments, be sure and say thanks, Leo, for letting us try out his wings so we can test it with this high modulus mast. Okay, so I do not usually recommend high aspect wings for people around here, like freshwater, flatwater riders. Uh, and the reason that I don't do that is that in my opinion, uh, and probably the opinion of many others, the whole purpose of the high aspect wing isn't uh, about uh, carving in flats. It's, a, it's actually about having a, uh, taking the entire surface area of the wing and spreading it really wide. Why would you want to do that? Because when you're riding big waves and they're vertical, the chances that part of your wing being you know, floating in just the air, because if there's a, a vertical wall here, that you'll have more of your wing actually getting you know, uh, traction on that wave. In flat water condition, it's actually not a benefit to you. Why? Because when you bank, then more of your wing's gonna be up out of the water. Normally my, my wing would be way down here like this, and I turn, none of it's, none of it's going above the surface. But if my, my wing is really, really wide, like in high aspect, then you can see how more of it's gonna be up in the surface. Not what you want in a flat water condition. That is, that's not benefiting you, but um, if the wave is vertical or more vertical, more coming up at an angle and you want to ride it, like ride the wall, right? Then it makes a lot of sense 
to have more, you know, have it wider so that more of your wing can be in that wall than than this. Like we're only maybe half my wing would be in it. Maybe on this one, three quarters of my wing would be in it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that made sense. That's the way I understand that it works. And that's why I generally do not recommend high aspect wings for people in on a lake, you know, because we're not going to get verticals here. For the most part, we're not going to get verticals here. So um, that's why I don't do it. But I want to try it with this. Let's see how, let's see how well it works. And um, I'm going to see if I can put it through its paces because I want to find out if I can tell any difference between the high modulus mast and their normal mast. And I want to make sure that I've done everything I can to give it a fair shake. Let me wrap up this damn show. Uh, final word on the high modulus mast. Uh, yes, I originally thought it 
was a nothing burger. But it turns out that uh, if, you, if you pair the high modulus uh, mast with especially larger wings with more flex to them, it seems, they become incredibly responsive. Um, in fact, I had a really great time riding the high aspect 90 um, out there. And I don't, I, I've ridden them a handful of times in the past. And I never really enjoyed them very much. I found them to be, uh, I mean, they're, they have a great glide to them. They're very efficient in the sense that like it takes very little power and you get to glide for a very long time off of very little power. But I didn't really think that they were all that responsive uh, in the past when I rode them. Uh, you know, the, I guess they're, they're great. If you get up on a wave, you know, you can really feel that you can use that momentum and so for that, they're, they're really, really great. But, uh, you know, on the lake, I've never enjoyed riding them, but I really had fun yesterday. And even though I am by no means well-practiced on a high aspect wing, I got on that thing and in five minutes, I was riding it like I always ride it. It was super duper responsive with that new mast. Um, I felt a ton, like, like when I mean responsive, I mean, I guess mostly I can feel every little thing that's happening underwater. When I cut through Leo's wake, uh, like it was like thud. And, and so we, that transfers up the mast and into the board uh, better than I've ever felt any um, wing transmit before. And I'm sure that the high aspect transmits pretty well. It's like, think about it like this. It's, it's like an insect with really long antennae, you know, so it's, you can feel everything going on down there, which is great if you're, especially for surfing waves, you got to feel what the current's doing. You got to figure out how much force and lift and how much turbulence there is. So I could see, yeah, I think the lift made a great wing for what they made it for, uh, which is they, I think, I think that they really just wanted to make the best surf wing they could. And uh, I don't know exactly what spawned them to, to do it. Maybe, there's a competitive brand that's like soup, you know, made, made a really stiff mass. I don't know. It just seemed to come from out of nowhere, but I got a hand to them. They seem to know what they're doing in that regard. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is it's, it's not really a, an upgrade to the previous 32 inch mast. I mean, it's a replacement for the, the old 32 inch mast. Um, so, you know, anyone who buys something new and they buy the taller mass, and that's the only thing you should be buying. Uh, if you've heard anything I've said about mass length, like, and you're not buying the tallest mass you can get, it's a regret, and I can prove it. In fact, I got a show coming up where uh, Leo, my neighbor, he, he's got a, uh, a Lift 3F, and those only come with a 28-inch uh, mass. Well, I let him borrow one of my taller masts and he's like oh my god this is the best like and i'm like yep that's exactly what i said too but anyway the module high modulus mast it's very good uh you will either you know not notice any difference or like me you'll be like you put the right combo on there you're you're gonna feel it and it's it feels good one other thing that I did notice about that mast, and, and again, like, you know, it's slight, but I think it's there. I did some risky stuff and I just couldn't seem to fall. Like I, I, I put on my camber pro with it and like I was doing things where I'd like bury the edge and I pulled all of them out or most of them out, like doing some risky things. And I was like, is that the mast? I mean, it's not like I'm doing anything all that differently. I, it feels to me like there's just a little bit more control over the wing under the water. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this show up. I think that I sufficiently covered the high modulus uh, mast. Uh, it's, it's something new that Lyft did this year. Um, you know, is, is it like a game changer? Eh, I mean, not for me, but, uh, I, I could see that if I was really into ride and surf and I really needed an incredible amount of finesse and de I mean, it's, I think it's better. So, uh, there we go. 
that's a wrap on this show. I got a few more shows coming up. If you guys could help me get to 1,000 subscribers before I wrap up my season, I'll keep rolling through the winter. Otherwise, I'm going to have to move on to, to other uh, ventures uh, on the off season. Um, so no pressure, but like if you watch and if you like, if you could subscribe, it's just a click. It costs you nothing. You know, help me out. Uh, and yeah, a few more shows for sure. Uh, either way. So um, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.